Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my channel. In my last video, I took the front forks off my Interceptor 650 so I could get ready to install the YSS fork upgrade kit. So today, I'm going to open up the forks, I'll install the YSS kit, and then I'll show you how to put this thing back together. When you open up the kit, make sure you've got all the parts before you get started. So you should have two preload adjusters, two spacer tubes, two support plates, the fork springs, and two fork valves. To open up the front fork, it's pretty easy. You just take a size 22 wrench, and you can use this to open the top cap. One thing to remember is this top cap is under pressure, so once you get it loose enough with the wrench to where you can spin it by hand, you want to turn it and keep pushing down a little bit so it doesn't come flying off. Once you get the top cap off, you can just pour the oil into a drain pan and keep your finger over the end so the parts don't come out. Once you pour the oil out, you can remove the spacer tube, then you can just tilt the fork over and let the internals slide out. Once you get the spring and the other parts out, you need to pump the fork about 15 to 20 times to get the rest of the oil out. Now you can take the YSS fork valve with the spring side up and just let it slide down the fork. Now you can install the fork spring. When you install the spring support plate, you want to stand the fork up and down so you can make sure that the support plate drops flat. Now you can take the spacer tube and that's the last part that goes inside. The weight of oil that you go with is your choice, and a lot of people are going to use the YSS oil because it's a YSS kit, but I'm actually going to go with a 15 weight Maxima oil, and this is a good oil if you can't get your hands on the YSS brand. The measuring cup I'm using only goes up to 250 mils, so I'll have to do this a couple times because the service manual says to put 430 mils per leg. Now you can just hold the fork straight up and down, take your measuring cup, and just pour it in. Once you fill up the fork with oil, now we can take the preload adjuster and you just want to push down until it starts to thread. Now you can use a size 19 wrench to tighten the top cap and you don't need to tighten it real tight, just get it to seat all the way down. And that's it. I'm going to start on the left side of the bike so you can just take the fork and slide it through the steering stem. Then put on your headlight mounting bracket and take it up. When you get to the top yoke, 
if the fork won't go through, don't force it. You can take a screwdriver and put it in the slot on the top yoke and you don't have to pull hard and the fork will go right up. I'm gonna tighten the headlight mounting bracket to the side just so it doesn't move around while I'm working. I'm gonna use a digital caliper to measure from the top of the fork cap to the top of the yoke. And that measurement should be 10 millimeters with the stock cap. But the YSS cap is actually one millimeter thicker than the stock cap. So I'm gonna add one millimeter to my measurement, making it 11 millimeters. You can use the caliper to measure three different ways. You can measure on the inside, you can measure on the outside, and you can use this end to measure depth. And this is what I'm gonna to use to measure the top of the forks. I've preset the caliper to 11 millimeters and locked it in place. And you wanna make your measurement from this point right here on the inside of this slot. So I'll set the caliper on the top cap and I'm a little bit off, so I'm gonna come down. Until it touches flush. Now you wanna tighten the screw just a little bit in the top yoke, just so the fork doesn't move around. Now we'll do the same thing with the right side. Put on your headlight mounting bracket. Put a screwdriver in the top slot and it'll go right in. After you've got the measurement for the right side fairly close, you can take your center shaft and slide it through. Make sure it goes through the other side easily and square. And if it doesn't, adjust one of the forks and then you can tighten up the screw in the top yoke. The measurement from the bottom of the headlight bracket to the top of the steering stem should be 58 millimeters. Now you can torque the two screws in the steering stem and the one screw in the top yoke to 14 and 3 quarter foot pounds. On the back of the speed sensor, there's a cross member right here and it needs to go in this slot on the front wheel hub. The easiest way to do this is to get the wheel close to the front fork with this slot going straight up and down. Then take the speed sensor and it should fall right into place. On the other side of the wheel, there's a spacer and it comes out so you might need to hold it in place while you're putting the wheel back on. There's also a tab on the back of the right fork and it needs to go in this slot on the speed sensor. Make sure you're holding the spacer on the back side of the wheel, then you can roll the wheel and get it lined up. Make sure the speed sensor goes into its slot. I put bearing grease on the center shaft so it doesn't end up marring later on. You can just slide it through. Once you get it started, you might need to square the wheel up a little bit. Once it lines up, you can just push it all the way through until it stops. Don't forget to put the washer on first, then the retaining nut. Use a five millimeter Allen wrench and tighten up the screw on the bottom of the fork. There's no specified torque, so just get it really snug. On the right side of the bike, you can use a size 16 wrench to hold the center shaft. 
While you're holding the center shaft on the right side of the bike, you can use a size 24 socket to tighten the retaining nut on the left side. Go ahead and remount the speed sensor cable bracket. Torque the two mounting bolts for the brake caliper to 33 foot-pounds. When you go to remount the speed sensor, make sure you put the shim behind it before you mount it. The torque setting for the speed sensor is 2 foot-pounds, so get it snug but don't over-tighten it. Now we can mount the fender. Now I'll go ahead and let the bike down. Torque the top cap on the forks to 14 and 3 quarter foot pounds. Once you get everything done, you want to get on the bike and hold the front brake and compress the front forks a few times. Well, that's all I've got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, Go ahead, click subscribe, and stay up to date with my latest videos. Well, thanks again, and have a wonderful day.